In physics and mathematics, in the area of vector calculus, Helmholtz's theorem, also known as the fundamental theorem of vector calculus, states that any sufficiently smooth, rapidly decaying vector field in three dimensions can be resolved into the sum of an rotational vector field and a solenoidal vector field. This is known as the Helmholtz decomposition. It is named after Hermann von Helmholtz because an irrotational vector field has a scalar potential and a solenoidal vector field has a vector potential. The Helmholtz decomposition states that a vector field can be decomposed as the sum of the form where phi is a scalar field called scalar potential, and A is a vector field called a vector potential. Statement of the theorem. Let F be a vector field on a bounded domain VR3, which is twice continuously differentiable, and let S be the surface that encloses the domain V. Then F can be decomposed into a curl-free component and a divergence-free component, where an is the gradient W dot R dot T O not if V equals R3 and is therefore unbounded, and F vanishes faster than is R infinity. Then the second component of both scalar and vector potential is zero, that is, derivation. Suppose we have a vector function f of which we know the curl times f and the divergence f in the domain and the fields on the boundary, writing the function using delta function in the form then using the vectorial identities we get take advantage of the divergence theorem. The equation can be rewritten as with outward surface normal. Define hence is the Green's function for the Laplacian, and in a more general setting it should be replaced by the appropriate Green's function, for example, in two dimensions it should be replaced by. For higher dimensional generalization, see the discussion of Hodge decomposition below. Another derivation from the Fourier transform write f as a Fourier transform. The Fourier transform of a scalar field is a scalar field, and the Fourier transform of a vector field is a vector field of same dimension. Now consider the following scalar and vector fields, hence fields with prescribed divergence and curl. The term Helmholtz theorem can also refer to the following. Let C be a solenoidal vector field and D a scalar field on R3 which are sufficiently smooth and which vanish faster than 1, R2 at infinity. Then there exists a vector field F such that and if additionally the vector field F vanishes as R infinity, then F is unique. In other words, a vector field can be constructed with both a specified divergence and a specified curl, and if it also vanishes at infinity, it is uniquely specified by its divergence and curl. This theorem is of great importance in electrostatics. Since Maxwell's equations for the electric and magnetic fields in the static case are of exactly this type, the proof is by a construction generalizing the one given above. We set where represents the Newtonian potential operator. Differential forms. The Hodge decomposition is closely related to the Helmholtz decomposition. Generalizing from vector fields on R3 to differential forms on a Riemannian manifold M. Most formulations of the Hodge decomposition require M to be compact. Since this is not true of R3, the Hodge decomposition theorem is not strictly a generalization of the Helmholtz theorem. However, the compactness restriction in the usual formulation of the Hodge decomposition can be replaced by suitable decay assumptions at infinity on the differential forms involved giving a proper generalization of the Helmholtz theorem. Weak formulation. The Helmholtz decomposition can also be generalized by reducing the regularity assumptions. Suppose omega is a bounded, simply connected, Lipschitz domain. Every square integrable vector field U3 has an orthogonal decomposition, where phi is in the Sobolev space H1 of square integrable functions on omega whose partial derivatives defined in the distribution sense a square, integrable, and AH, the Sobolev space of vector fields consisting of square integrable vector fields with square integrable curl. For a slightly smoother vector field UH, a similar decomposition Position holds, where phi h1, v, d, longitudinal and transverse fields, 
A terminology often used in physics refers to the curl-free component of a vector field as the longitudinal component and the divergence-free component as the transverse component. This terminology comes from the following construction. Compute the three-dimensional Fourier transform of the vector field F. Then decompose this field, at each point K, into two components, one of which points longitudinally, i.e., parallel to K, the other of which points in the transverse direction, i.e., perpendicular to K. So far, we have now we apply an inverse Fourier transform to each of these components. Using properties of Fourier transforms, we derive since then, we can get so this is indeed the Helmholtz decomposition.